One of the coolest features of Payday 2 are the various characters you can play as that are the result of crossovers with other franchises. There's the titular character from the John Wick series, Tony Montana from the Scarface movies, and Bodie from Point Break. One of these crossover characters, the rooster masked cassette-speaking Enigma Jacket, comes from an indie game named Hotline Miami, and with the inclusion of the main protagonist of the game within Payday 2, it has brought up questions of whether Hotline Miami and Payday share the same universe, and whether the events of Hotline Miami occurred in the Payday 2 world. There have been some mixed messages from the developers of the respective games on the topic. Overkill Software say all crossover characters are canon, while Denitin have answered ambiguously. So let's take some time, and with no restraint on spoilers, try to determine whether the jacket in Payday 2 is the same person from the Hotline Miami games. So let's start with a quick summary of the character's history from Hotline Miami. His story starts in Hawaii in 1985, where Jacket was fighting in a war between Russia and the United States. A man of few words, he was part of a special forces unit named the Ghost Wolves, who were assigned missions that were essentially suicide missions to turn the tide of the war in America's favor. The Ghost Wolves were good at what they did and frequently defied the odds and completed their assignments, but each one that was successful raised the dangers and stakes of the next one. These escalations eventually culminated in Jacket being gravely wounded in a hopeless attack on a power plant, an injury that eventually led to his discharge. Upon his return to civilian life, he watched San Francisco, as well as his best friend, get nuked by Russia, an event which led to America's defeat in the war. A number of years later, in April of 1989, Jacket received a strange message on his answering machine along with a rubber animal mask and a box at his door. Included in the box were a set of instructions, as well as an address directing him to a hideout of the Russian Mafia. Still harboring resentment for America's defeat and his best friend's death, Jacket killed the Russians within and completed the instructions. That wasn't the last of his phone calls, however. Over the course of several months, the calls continued as did Jacket's killings of more and more Russians, as he was sent on more and more missions. While there are other events that occurred during that summer, Jacket's rampage led him to destroy the Russian Mafia's operations in Miami by July of 1989. Moving on to Payday 2, where there isn't much, the limited information we have on Jacket comes from his character blurb in the FBI files, both of which contain similar information. The FBI files describe him as an enigmatic sociopath that only speaks using various cassette tapes in a tape recorder, and raises the possibility that he may be responsible for a series of murders that took place in Miami. His character blurb goes into a bit more detail, acknowledging that he spent time in the military, and that there is a claim that he destroyed the Russian Mafia branch operating in Miami. While light on the details, the information on Jacket that's found in Payday 2 does carry the broad strokes of his story from Hotline Miami. Which leads us to our question, are they the same person? Well, Jacket's previous experience in the military could explain how he's so adept at the wide array of weapons that the Payday 2 gang uses in their heists. And just like in Hotline Miami, Jacket doesn't speak at all and has an unflinching regard to taking human life. However, despite these similarities, it's quite unlikely that the two men are one and the same, and that's due to how Jacket's story ends in Hotline Miami 2. Portions of the game take place in 1991, after the Masked Maniac killings, where Jacket has since been arrested and is standing trial for the murders he committed in 1989. In his defense, he puts forth his understanding of why he committed the murders, the Russian Mafia was leaving messages on his answering machine coercing him to go to the addresses mentioned and kill the people inside. However, what Jacket didn't know was that it wasn't the Russian Mafia sending him on those missions. After all, why would they want to eliminate their own members? It was actually an organization named 50 Blessings who posed as a peaceful organization centered on American patriotism. Frustrated with America's standing following the Russo-American War, they were secretly sending their members, 
many of them veterans that had fought in the war, on these attacks on Russians by leaving them the phone messages. They had managed to escape detection by masking their calls in a way that made it appear as if they came from the Russian Mafia. All of this was driven by an intent to drum up anti-Russian sentiment in America with the ultimate goal of remaking America in their image. Their plan culminated in an attack in December of 1991, where 50 Blessings assassinated the presidents of the United States and Russia, staged a coup, and took control of the American government, standing opposed to Russia. This led Russia to retaliate with a nuclear attack on American cities, Miami among them. Jacket was caught in one of the blasts of the bombs, the flash of the explosion washing over him and ending his life. It's very unlikely that Jacket escaped the blast, meaning there's no way he could have been alive in 2013 to go on heists with the Payday Gang. But even if he did somehow survive the blast and defy the incredible odds against him, having to mitigate, if not eliminate, the effects of radioactive fallout, be rescued from the blast zone to be taken to safety, escape imprisonment during the chaos that followed the explosion, and avoiding capture for at least 22 years to make it to 2013, it's still incredibly unlikely that he's the same person seen in Payday 2, chiefly because of the monumental historical events that would have transpired in the history of the world of Hotline Miami. Things like a war between two superpowers resulting in one being nuked, or a secret society performing a violent takeover of the American government, triggering another war, this one nuclear, between the two superpowers that resulted in at least one, but likely many other American cities being nuked, not to mention other retaliatory attacks that would have taken place across the world. These events would have drastically changed the history of the entire planet, and none of that is mentioned anywhere in the universe of Payday 2. In fact, it seems that global and American history is largely unchanged in the Payday world, up until the various heists performed by the Payday Gang. Thus, it's quite safe to say that the jacket in Payday 2 is not the same jacket as Hotline Miami, and that the two games do not share a universe. Which answers our big question, but only brings up more. Namely, who is this jacket? And how did he learn about the jacket from Hotline Miami? Well, there's a clue in Payday 2 that suggests that while the two games do not share a universe, they do both exist within the same universe. And this clue is found in Jacket's hangout in the safe house, a room where he lounges in comfort and records new voice lines for his recorder. Like the other rooms in the safe house, Jacket's hangout can be upgraded, adding little touches that further reference his adventures from Hotline Miami. But in the final tier three upgrade, a seemingly innocuous item is added that confirms how the two games are connected and where Jacket found his identity, an arcade cabinet of Hotline Miami. With the inclusion of this cabinet, it suggests that while the events of Hotline Miami don't exist in the Payday universe, the game does, and it's not too far-fetched that it would. Hotline Miami originally came out in 2012, and Payday 2 takes place in at least 2013, meaning it's entirely possible Hotline Miami could have been released in the Payday 2 world prior to the events of the game. Furthermore, when we go back to the information on Jacket in Payday 2, it reveals that while the information on file has the broad strokes of Jacket's story from Hotline Miami, there are also some differences. His character blurb merely suggests he may have been responsible for destroying the Russian Mafia in Miami, instead of the full attribution like there is in Hotline Miami. There is no mention of Jacket's arrest from the summer of 1989, nor his trial from 1991, both of which would have taken place if he were the same man from Hotline Miami. And there is an explicit mention of Jacket communicating via a tape recorder something Jacket never did in Hotline Miami. All of this together suggests that the Jacket of Payday 2 is nothing more than a fanboy, someone that took inspiration from the actions of a fictitious character from a video game and tried to become that character themselves, making the Payday 2 Jacket more like the fans from Hotline Miami 2 than his namesake from Hotline Miami. 
However, one thing Halamami is great at doing is getting the player to question their understanding of what exactly is true. In the games, players are led to the wrong or incorrect conclusion thanks to missing or inaccurate information. They are led to wonder what's real and what's not thanks to conversations and confrontations that take place entirely in dreams and nightmares, and they are left baffled by events that directly contradict events seen earlier in the games. There's even a moment where multiple timelines seems like a legitimate possibility. Maybe something similar is happening here in Payday 2, a timeline where some of the events of Hotline Miami didn't happen. Maybe in this timeline, Jacket was never arrested because he and Biker teamed up to take out 50 Blessings instead of destroying the Russian Mafia. Maybe this is a timeline where Evan Wright exposed 50 Blessings before they were able to perform their coup and Jacket was able to escape from prison and join the Payday Gang. Maybe, in this timeline, Biker executed the janitors in their basement, preventing the phone messages from continuing to go through, thereby leading to Jacket never being arrested for his murders. Of course, considering all these options opens up a huge can of worms where there's multiple different possibilities that could all be justified in their own way, so this is incredibly unlikely, but fun to speculate about. Whatever the case may be, ultimately, leaving the Payday 2 jacket a mystery just feels like the best way to represent the character, as in this way, he perfectly captures the spirit of the game he's originally from, making him a perfect homage to Hotline Miami. And that brings us to the end of the theory crafting of Jacket's representation in Payday 2. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not much of a Payday 2 player, so I may have missed some information or supporting evidence from a game that would have been applicable here, but I hope it didn't detract from the video too much, and I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. In regards to Hotline Miami, I barely touched on the complexities and depth of the story of the games, so if that quick little summary interested you, I definitely recommend giving the games a try. If you don't want to play the games and just want to hear about the story, I've got various videos on my channel summing up the various plot threads of the game, including a full summary of Jacket's story from the games, so feel free to give those a watch. Other than that though, I'm done here. If you have any questions, feel free to ask and I'll do my best to answer them. But until next time, thank you for watching and see you later.